Hi, I'm Bobby C. Well, we're just back from our southern trip, and it's March in Pennsylvania, so guess what? We've got to winterize again. So today I'm going to show you how I winterized my 2020 uh, Integra Odyssey 26M. Uh, this procedure will apply to, I believe, any Jayco Class C. They're all kind of about the same. In terms of the winterizing process, I used to have a Jayco Melbourne. It was actually basically the same thing. So um, here we go. If you like what you see, please give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. In my winterizing process, I use um, the RV and Marine antifreeze. Um, other people do it using compressed air. You can do that also. Uh, be careful if you do that, that your pressure's on too high when you're using compressed air. That A lot of people use that, but I found this to be very convenient. Um, so not that expensive. Each one of these I think right now is about three dollars and some cents in Walmart. And I'm gonna need three of them or two and a half, something like that. So let's go. I'm gonna uh, utilize this procedure and to winterize. And if you follow these steps in order, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. So uh, first step is, I've already done it. You gotta empty, uh, and if you can, flush your black and gray tank. So that's been done. That's step one. Step two is uh, you have to open up all of your um, drains. So you wanna drain all your water out completely um, here's my low point drain. I've already emptied that. That's done. My other drains are in my utility bay. And in particular in mine, they're in the rear. So those are both open right now. And uh, you want to drain, use that to drain all of the remaining water that's in your lines out. Now, to make sure that all of your water is out of your water lines, you do want to open up each valve in all your faucets, flush a commode that releases the air out of the lines. As you can hear, there's some air in my lines right now, so some more, more water might be coming out. If you have an outside shower, you also want to make sure that you open the valves on that. And uh, as you can see, some additional water has drained out there so again you just want to get all of the water out of your lines all right in step three we have to remove the if you have an internal water filter cartridge that has to be removed um, and i do and in my case it is under my my sink here and it's right in there so i've got to uh, remove this canister and take the water filter cartridge out uh, before you winterize you don't want to have any antifreeze in there Okay, I don't know how well you can see this, and I'm trying to shine a light on. There is a valve on top of the water line going into the water filter cartridge and coming out. You can turn those valves off, uh, and I would recommend you do that before you remove the uh, water filter canister. Now, when you use the spanner wrench on here, again, just remember, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So you want to, to remove it, you want to uh, turn that counterclockwise or to the left so I'll be doing that next one last tip on these water filter cartridges they are not secured too well to the, the RV itself so you want to hold the water filter cartridge with your left hand while you rotate it with your right hand to kind of keep it stable I have pulled this one away from the wall already so I've actually secured it with some uh, a little better securing than it had before. Okay, I'm going to show you something else that's very important. Uh, on the water filter cartridge, uh, there is a, a seal, as you can see, uh, a gasket that goes with these uh, uh, cartridge holders, I guess is what you would call this. Um, you want to make sure that that's in place. If not, you, you can tighten it and it will leak. Uh, it has to have that gasket. That happened to me once. Uh, lesson learned, I had to call out a tech at Myrtle Beach. Um, I lost mine somehow when I took it out to uh, de and uh, I couldn't get it to seal. 
now you want to remember to close the valves that the two valves that go to and out of the water filter cartridges you want to actually open those back up because you want the antifreeze to flow through there um, notice I keep this under here I want to make sure if there's any leaks I catch it right away now when you reinstall the cartridge holder uh, water filter cartridge holder you want to take your time uh, make sure you don't cross threads uh, righty tighty just get it up there and snug it up you don't want to make it too tight or you're gonna have a problem when you go to remove it all right now that you've uh, removed the water filter cartridge from the system and reinstalled the holder uh, what you want to do is make sure you close all of the valves that you open including the shower outside so now you want to close all the valves in the system all right step number four is we want to drain the water heater you don't want to have any antifreeze in your water heater uh, it doesn't mix well with that so you do want to drain your water heater um, right on the side here um, prior to draining the water heater you want to open the pressure relief valve and right here is your plug I'm going to take that plug out and uh, you'll see the water drain out okay I loosened up the plug I have the pressure relief valve open I'm going to just twist this off the rest of it and the water that's in there about six gallons should come rushing out and there we go Something also that I learned about these uh, type of plastic plugs of this type that you screw on for your seal is you should not use um, pipe thread on your threads. I was told that's, uh, that's not wise to do that. So we'll let it drain. Again, it should be about six gallons. All right, once the uh, water is completely out of the water heater, you'll want to close the pressure relief valve and put the plastic plug back on. You want to snug that up. Um, we're going to be pressurizing the system when we winterize. In step number five, we have to change the valves under the, in my case, under the refrigerator to the bypass position. So no antifreeze would flow into the water heater. You don't want that. Okay, I wanted to show you the valves in on my Integra Odyssey 26M. Yours may look a little different. Sometimes there's three valve configurations. This one has two valves. So basically uh, what's happening here is you always look to uh, where the valve is positioned to see the direction of the valves. So for example right here that's pointing inside so that means that water is flowing inside the hot water heater from the cold line and it's flowing outside from the hot water line so if we want to do the bypass basically what we do is just turn the valve that way and both of them and if you can see basically what that does is it causes the water to flow on a bypass line so nothing is going into the hot water tank and that's what you want we're getting ready to pull antifreeze up into our system so this is step six in our fresh water intake there is a conical shaped washer here we need to reverse that so that it activates a check valve this is a very important step it makes it easier to draw in the antifreeze okay in step seven you want to turn your valves in your utility bay uh, yours may look a little different. Most of the Jayco models will be, be very similar or identical to this. So you want to uh, turn your valves to 2 and 4, which is sanitize and winterize your lines. You don't want to sanitize your tank. That's for sanitizing your fresh water tank. We want to sanit sanitize and winterize lines. So that is 2 and 4. Make sure your valves are in the right position or this won't work. You're now ready to pull the antifreeze up into your system. So I have this short hose that was supplied with your rig. I'm going to insert it into the antifreeze jug. 
like so. And in my case, I have a water pump switch out here. So this is uh, step eight. Uh, the water pump will go on and it should begin siphoning the antifreeze into your system. And it's got to develop some pressure first. If you have some difficulty getting it started, um, you can go back to your valves and open and close them. It looks like I still had some water in my lines. All right, I was having some difficulty, as sometimes happens, getting uh, the antifreeze to flow. And what I found worked for me was to turn on or off the outside shower valves and that sort of got it going so hopefully we'll keep it going from here I can see it's going in slowly it should take as I said about two and a half three gallons of this so okay now that we have it going basically what we want to do is to turn on our each valve individually the water pump on to make sure we have a good flow of antifreeze coming out so we're going to do that through all the valves go back here we'll do the commode as well And the shower. What a good solid flow of the pink stuff. So we're getting there. Okay, and now we're gonna make sure that we also get the outside shower, most importantly. So again, I'm gonna turn on my water pump and turn on my valves here. Make sure we're getting the pink stuff coming through, and I think we are. Okay, and now finally we want to put uh, antifreeze, remaining antifreeze in the traps to make sure you have antifreeze in each of the traps of the sinks. And uh, you're going to be pretty much done. All right, once you're done, you want to make sure that you clean up any excess antifreeze in there. You don't want it to stain your sinks and also your shower. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it, you got something out of it. I think this procedure could be used for basically all Jayco Class C's and, and very similar procedure to a lot of other Class C's. So if you like what you see, again, please give me the big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. This is Bobby C. and the RV signing out.